Hi, I'm Dr. Sarah Friedewald. I am the Division Chief of Breast and Women's Imaging at Northwestern Memorial Hospital and the Medical Director of the Lynn Sage Comprehensive Breast Center here in Chicago. Today's lecture is going to be a literature review uh, regarding tomosynthesis, and I'm going to review the main uh, papers published on the benefits of utilizing this technology. I'm going to start out with talking briefly about the FDA approval back in 2011 and then review some of the prospective randomized trials published in Europe and then move on to the United States papers that have been published starting with some of the larger studies and then diving deeper into the studies looking at the different breast densities as well as synthesized imaging and then going on to um, comparing it with ultrasound and uh, finally end up with a paper published about tomosynthesis in women in their 40s. So tomosynthesis was FDA approved in 2011. There were uh, just over a thousand women who were recruited from five clinical centers. Uh, 856 women had presented for screening mammography and 227 women had presented for breast biopsies. All subjects underwent the combination examination, both the 2D and 3D imaging in the CC and MLO projections. The reader studies consisted of a comparison of the 2D mammography to the combination of 2D plus tomosynthesis in a sequential reading. The reader studies were enriched with cancer cases, recalled screening cases, and benign biopsy cases. The primary endpoints of the reader studies were to show an improved area under the curve as well as a decrease in recall rate. These are the uh, ROC curves for each of the individual radiologists in the reader study. There were 12 readers, and I think what's so powerful about this slide shows that uh, when tomosynthesis was added, represented by the yellow line, uh, everybody improved the area under their curve. So tomosynthesis improved the performance of every reader some more than others. We can see that the area under the curve was significantly greater here in this reader uh, where it was not as much different uh, for this reader. So the second reader study was a comparison of the 2D alone to the combination examination but only utilizing the MLO view in tomosynthesis, not the CC view. They were the same cancer cases as the first reader study, but had different radiologists, and there were different non-cancer cases. We can see in this chart that the uh, white line represents the 2D alone, the yellow represents the combination examination, whereas the blue dotted line shows that there was a slight improved area under the curve with the MLO view only, but not as great when both the CC and the MLO views were used for interpretation. So it really emphasizes the point that two views, although uh, we think of tomosynthesis as a 3D examination, really um, requires both the CC and the MLO views for greatest uh, performance. FDA approval started in 2011 with the first unit uh, approved and then was followed by uh, three other vendors in 2014, 2015, and then finally in January of this year with the fourth vendor getting approval for tomosynthesis. Uh, we now um, are going to review some of the first studies that showed tomosynthesis um, uh, as a technology and how it improved in patients who were screened. I'm just going to briefly review these as they were um, uh, performed uh, quite a bit ago. The first uh, paper I'm going to review is uh, authored by Professor Scana and was published in Radiology in 2013. And this was a prospective trial um, from 2010 to 2011. Uh, where 29,000 women were invited and um, 17,960 women attended, which was about 60%. Uh, there is independent double reading in Europe, and therefore it's a slightly different environment than the United States. Um, there were two views obtained of each breast, and there were four arms of the study. The first arm was mammography alone, the second arm was with CAD, the third arm was with tomosynthesis, and the fourth arm was synthesized mammography with tomosynthesis. 
The interim analysis was published in radiology in 2013, and the two arms that were compared were mammography alone as well as the combination examination. Um, as I mentioned before, there was arbitration, which means that after a patient was given uh, a score based on their mammogram, the uh, examination was reviewed by a consensus group that would determine the final outcome. Uh, this is different than the practice in the United States. So I just want to review how the score is slightly different um, than our BIRADS uh, scores. Uh, a one is a negative examination, but a score of two suggests that the patient would be recalled for a probably benign finding, more like our BIRADS three, but the interpreter referred the final decision to the arbitration consensus meeting. Um, a score of three um, would be a finding that was recalled by the interpreter um, but wanted the case discussed with the um, final decision made by the arbitration meeting, so it's a suggestive of malignancy, um, not something that would be followed. A score of four would um, be something that was recalled by the interpreter um, and was thought to be malignant, um, and this was not allowed to be dismissed at arbitration, and a score of five was highly suggestive of malignancy. So a true positive was defined as a score of a greater or equal than a two positive for cancer, and a false positive was a score of greater or equal to two, but that was dismissed at arbitration. So many of the cases that come to arbitration get dismissed. Uh, the cancer detection rate was the number of cancers per thousand, which is similar to here in the United States, and the positive predictive value was the percentage of women who received a score of greater than or equal to two at the time of screening who were subsequently recalled from arbitration and were positive for cancers. So the, the results of this um, study was very exciting because um, not only was there an increase in cancer detection, but we found that there was a decrease in the false positive recall, which um, was um, a, an unusual process because oftentimes when there is uh, increase in sensitivity, we do not improve our specificity. Um, but that was fortunately not the case, and that results in a positive predictive value of um, um, a relative change of 40%. So the strengths of this trial was that it was a prospective trial, it was population-based, and there are a large number of women who were consented, but it is different than the United States, and therefore it's difficult to extrapolate their findings, especially with the double reading with consensus. Um, Additionally, with arbitration, all of the data were available um, to the uh, consensus group, which would um, th they would take into consideration the tomosynthesis findings, even if it was um, a uh, abnormality that um, was only screened uh, with mammography alone. So, therefore, the uh, recall rates of women who would have been screened with digital mammography alone actually were probably lower. So, it underestimates the recall rate. Um, additionally, women are screened every other year um, at, between the ages of 50 and 69, and so there's no data on women in their 40s. The second prospective trial that was published, um, known as the STORM trial, um, was in Italy, and it was also a population-based screening trial. They looked at asymptomatic women aged 48 years and older, and it was from August 2011 to June 2012, and their screening was also every other year. The two cohorts were 2D mammography alone, as well as 2D plus tomosynthesis. They did two views of each breast with standard double reading. Um, breast density was also collected. The schematic demonstrates really how the um, prospective trial was designed. Um, the patient was enrolled, and the um, first radiologist would read the uh, digital mammography only examination um, and then would score the result. And tomosynthesis was then interpreted for that same patient, and then that um, patient was then scored, and whether the patient should be recalled or not. Um, a uh, different radiologist would read um, different patient, the same patient, so it was a double reading, and score it in the same way. So the recall was based on the decision to recall by either reader at either screen uh, reading phase. 
There were 7,292 participants, 5% um, of the patients declined the tomosynthesis examination, and the overall recall of those uh, 7,000 patients for digital mammography was 141, whereas it significantly decreased when tomosynthesis was added at 73. Um, this varied by age, and they stratified the patients based uh, um, whether they were older or uh, younger than 60 or older and equal to 60. Um, the um, recall rates definitely um, uh, decreased as the patients were older, as well as a difference between the breast density. The recall rates um, dramatically dropped um, in patients who had denser breasts for both the um, uh, digital mammography alone and the combination examination. So looking at the um, screening recalls with 2D mammography alone, if they were not recalled based on the tomosynthesis findings, we saw a difference between the recall rate of 3.5% or, or false positive rate of 3.5% um, with tomosynthesis instead of 5.5% and found an increase simultaneous cancer detection of 8.1 per thousand versus 5.3 per thousand. The limitations of this study were that they did not determine incident versus prevalent screening with tomosynthesis, and they did not look at the differences in the types of malignancies that were found, and interval cancers were not available. Um, as with all of these studies, long-term outcome data are not available as well. The uh, patients who um, were recalled um, from the results of this trial um, and realizing those who were just screened with the 2D alone the false positive rate for 2D alone was 3.5% instead of 5.5%, and there was a simultaneous increase in cancer detection of 8.1 per thousand versus 5.3 per thousand with 2D alone. The limitations of the study were that uh, the incident um, examinations were not determined versus the prevalent screening examinations. So, um, there may be differences associated with tomosynthesis in that respect as that there will be higher recalls with the prevalent screening. They did not look at the biological differences in malignancies and interval cancers were not available as well as the long-term outcomes were not available. The next study that I will review are um, is the paper that we published in JAMA in 2014, which was the largest United States trial um, demonstrating the benefits of tomosynthesis. We looked at over 450,000 total examinations with 281,000 of those examinations being 2D alone, and they were obtained 365 days prior to the implementation of tomosynthesis at each site, and 173,000 patients who had tomosynthesis. And that was acquired from the date of implementation of tomosynthesis to December 31st, 2012. There were 13 different institutions that we acquired data from, both academic and community settings, and we were all early adopters of tomosynthesis. The sites were chosen based on projected volumes of greater than 5,000. This was a retrospective study, so different than the prospective European studies, and we gathered data from each site including the recall rate, the cancer detection rate, the positive predictive value for recall, and the positive predictive value for biopsy. We did look at the type of cancers that were detected, but just stratified them based on invasive or in situ. This was a retrospective analysis. We gathered data from each site including the recall rate, the cancer detection rate, the positive predictive value for recall, and the positive predictive value for biopsy. We did look at the type of cancers detected, but we stratified them as to whether they were invasive or in situ. This table uh, dives deeper into how we designed our study. As you can see here on the left, we had 13 different sites with different numbers of radiologists interpreting the examinations. We were both academic and non-academic institutions, and we collected data for the first time period of the digital mammography alone for 12 months prior to tomosynthesis implementation for a total of 281,000 cases. The second um, time period was the tomosynthesis time period which started at the date of implementation 
to the uh, cutoff date of December 31st, 2012 for a total of 173,000. And the combined number of cases for the primary analysis were 454,850. You can see that only two sites were able to completely convert to tomosynthesis overnight. So most of the other sites were operating in a hybrid environment and therefore 2D cases were acquired in the second time period. The results of our study showed that we had a decrease in recall rate of 15%, um, going from 10.7% for digital mammography recall rate down to 9.1%, um, which is a modest improvement but statistically significant. We did, however, statistically significantly improve our cancer detection rate at almost 30%, and when looking just at the invasive cancer detection, that improved by almost, um, uh, or just over 41%. And because of these two uh, uh, areas of improvement, our positive predictive value also statistically significantly improved by almost 50%. This chart goes into detail for each site and the performance after tomosynthesis was implemented um, with the recall rate on the x-axis and the cancer detection rate on the y-axis. We see that uh, site one started at a recall rate at approximately 13% and decreased to almost 10% after Thomas said this is improved uh, or was implemented. Um, the yellow and red arrows represent the performance of uh, all of the sites averaged together. But if you notice that site six and site seven actually have arrows going in the wrong direction. And why is that? Well, look, at site six went from a recall rate of um, about 10% and increased to about 12% after tomosynthesis was implemented, and uh, but still increased their cancer detection, whereas site seven actually had um, both an increase in recall rate and a decrease in cancer detection. When you go back to the uh, table I just showed you, you can see that site six um, only had tomosynthesis for three months prior to the cutoff date, and therefore it's likely that experience was a factor in their results. They had 18 different radiologists interpreting, um, and there is a learning curve associated with tomosynthesis and feeling comfortable with not recalling abnormalities that um, are seen on a 2D examination. Site 7, although had tomosynthesis for 18 months prior to the cutoff date, uh, they did not meet our threshold criteria of 5,000 uh, screening. So therefore, it's possible that there just weren't that many cancers um, present in that patient population. They also had a large number of radiologists interpreting um, with the lack of experience likely playing a factor as well. So it's important to know that um, all but two sites showed decreases in a recall rate, um, with site uh, six had a short duration of implementation and site seven having a small volume of cases. So therefore, uh, this emphasizes the importance of training with tomosynthesis. All but one site showed an increase in cancer detection, and this was site seven, and it's likely just because they only had a few thousand cases, and it's possible that there just weren't very many cancers in their patient population. We found no overall change in DCIS detection. So the strengths of our study was that it was a large volume of patients. We showed statistical significance, which the prior single site studies were unable to do. Um, we had a diversity of locations and types of practices, both academic and community, um, with specializations of radiologists um, that differed in every practice. So it really was typical of the US environment and I think can be extrapolated very nicely um, to many practices across the country. However, this study was limited uh, because it was a retrospective study and it was non-randomized. There was a potential for selection bias, but we addressed that by combining all of the data, including the concurrent digital mammography cases in the second time period in the hybrid sites, which showed that even when you add in those uh, patients who were imaged on the uh, 2D mammogram units in the second time period, we still showed um, statistically significant improvement in cancer detection and decrease in recall. 
Um, our study was population-based, not patient-level um, data, and therefore we don't know if the populations were comparable, but the mean age was similar in both cohorts, and um, we could have had repeat patients that had tomosynthesis a couple times in the sites that had the early uh, implementation of tomosynthesis. Um, the next uh, study I'm going to review um, was published in the JNCI in uh, 2014 as well, and this was a more detailed evaluation of the patients who received tomosynthesis. So the um, paper that I just described in JAMA um, was population-based. This was patient-level data. And similar in design, this patient um, uh, population consisted of digital mammography 12 months prior to tomosynthesis implementation, as well as a, a DBT cohort after tomosynthesis implementation. Um, there was information on each patient, including age, race, prior uh, mammography, um, attendance, and breast density, as well as information about the radiologist interpreting the examination. And they were able to adjust for the prior history of atypia, prior biopsies, et cetera. Um, the results were very similar to the larger multicenter trial, showing a decrease in recall rate of 15% and an increase in cancer detection rate of 20% when you look at the positive predictive value, which combines these two metrics. There was an increase um, in positive predictive value uh, relatively by 45%. So the results showed that the recall reduction with tomosynthesis was independent of density. There were similar reductions um, when stratified patients between dense and non-dense density. Um, a recall rate of 7.8% was present in tomosynthesis um, for non-dense uh, breast patients compared to 9.2% um, with uh, digital mammography alone, whereas the recall rate was 10.8% um, in patients who had dense breasts compared to 12.8% in patients who had uh, digital mammography alone. Um, there was a statistically significant increase in cancer detection among women who were under age 50 when screened with tomosynthesis, which is important when we're talking about whether guidelines should recommend whether or not patients in their 40s should get screened. The cancer detection rate nearly tripled with tomosynthesis um, screening compared to digital mammography, and they found 3.6 additional cancers per thousand. Um, they also found no change in DCIS detection. The strengths of this study was uh, that the site converted to tomosynthesis all at once, so there was, there was a decrease in the possibility of selection bias. There were the same radiologists before and after tomosynthesis implementation, and they had patient-level data with many detailed patient characteristics, um, unlike the larger study. However, this also was a retrospective non-randomized trial. There was a very similar cohort of patients based on the patient characteristics, but they were not able to link the entire population to the state cancer registry, um, and therefore evaluating for sensitivity and specificity was not possible. And it was not powered to detect statistically significant changes in cancer detection, um, particularly in the subgroups. The next paper I'll review um, uh, takes the original data that was published in JAMA and looked at the uh, breast density and how that factored in on the um, results of the study. So at this point, um, this paper was just published in 2016. We had much more information now about our populations. Um, we stratified also patients um, into dense and non-dense um, patients. This is the same cohort of patients that was originally published in JAMA in 2014. And we looked at the recalls per thousand screens for non-dense and dense patients, which showed statistically significant um, improvements um, for both of those categories, as well as statistically significant improvement in cancer detection for both dense and non-dense uh, patients, and uh, resulting in the positive predictive value for recall improving significantly as well. Um, however, when you look at uh, the breast density categories in quartiles with separating out almost entirely fatty or a BIRADS A, um, breast density, BIRADS B, C, and D, we can see that the majority of the patients um, fall into the middle two categories and show statistical significance in improvement of um, or decrease in recall 
um, for both those middle two categories as well as the invasive, invasive cancer detection and positive predictive value. But when you separate out the patients who have the BIRADS A type breasts, the almost entirely fatty breasts, we can see that actually there was not a statistically significant improvement in the recall rate, um, but uh, there was an improvement in cancer detection. When you separate out the patients who have extremely dense breasts, the 10% of patients that um, have a nearly white out um, of breast tissue on their mammogram, we see that there was a statistically significant improvement um, for recall, but not a statistically improvement in uh, invasive cancer detection. So it's just pointing out that tomosynthesis has some limitations, and it's primarily in these extreme breast density categories. Um, which is um, a small uh, population, but nevertheless important to consider when <clears throat> evaluating um, tomosynthesis. This is just another table that graphically shows the uh, improvement after tomosynthesis was added. We can see again that the recall rate uh, per thousand screens is uh, present on the x-axis and the cancer detection rate on the y-axis. Patients with extremely dense breast tissue, the, um, the solid lines represent the actual results and the uh, dotted lines represent the model adjusted cancer detection and recall rates. We see with it, patients with extremely dense uh, breast tissue, we definitely see an improvement in recall, but not a significant increase in cancer detection. Um, whereas women with almost entirely fatty breasts, we improve that cancer detection, but don't really improve on recall. Um, this just shows that our patient population is very similar to what is typically seen in the United States with a very small percentage of patients in the um, BIRADS A category and D category with a majority of the patients in the middle two categories and um, those showing statistically uh, significant improvement for both cancer detection and recall. Um, just going back to the actual numbers of the case, we can see also, too, that it's very hard to show a statistically significant improvement in cancer detection because of the small numbers. We only have um, 15,000 patients in this cohort um, with the tomosynthesis um, <clears throat> patients and 11,000 in the extremely dense um, breast category. And therefore, it's very hard um, to determine uh, statistically uh, significant results. Um, this study was not powered f to separate and stratify out based on breast density, but it is helpful to understand um, how tomosynthesis helps in the different breast density categories. So in conclusion, the increase in cancer detection in women with fatty uh, breasts was seen with tomosynthesis but didn't necessarily improve the recall. Um, there was a decrease in recall in women with extremely dense breasts um, but did not necessarily show an improvement in cancer detection. And that the scattered and heter heterogeneous breast density categories show both the decrease in recall and increase in cancer detection. Um, as I mentioned before, the limitation of the study was that we didn't power the study to look at subpopulations, and this was a retrospective study, and we were looking at population data, um, and um, we were not able to um, get uh, patient-level data. The next part of um, this talk is going to emphasize um, the advantages of synthesized mammography. I'm just going to briefly review tomosynthesis dose, um, as that's often a question we get from patients and whether um, we are um, still uh, imaging appropriately when we do both the combination of the digital mammogram and tomosynthesis. Current mammography units operate at one to two milligray for the phantom dose, and the FDA sets a screening dose uh, for the phantom at three milligray. So with the combination examination, we're at approximately 2.65 milligray, which is well below the FDA MQSA limit. So uh, this is just a graph showing um, that back when we were imaging with film, we actually had a higher dose, and that was uh, largely acceptable 
to um, image patients and that was uh, approaching to milligray. With digital mammography, we were able to decrease the dose uh, moderately, which um, is always our goal. Um, but when we add tomosynthesis, we get a lot more information. We're improving the mammogram, and it comes at a cost to, to increasing the dose. But again, it's still below the FDA limit, and it is not significantly more than uh, what we were doing with film mammography. The other important point to mention when we're talking about dose to the breasts are that the breast elements really don't mature until approximately age 30 um, or at the time of uh, pregnancy, whichever comes first. So as we know um, from patients who have received high-dose radiation uh, between the ages of 10 and 30 because of lymphoma, um, they have a much higher rate of developing breast cancer, and that is because the breast tissue is extremely sensitive when it is not completely uh, mature and the stem cells are still present. Um, and therefore, we are very careful about exposing patients under the age of 30. However, um, when uh, patients have a uh, child prior to age 30, the breasts rapidly mature over that nine-month uh, period and are fully mature at the time of delivery so that the breasts are ready for lactation, and therefore the breast is completely mature if the patient has had a child prior to age 30. After age 30 or after a patient has had a child, the breast is completely mature and the sensitive sensitivity to radiation is minimal. So it's just important to remember that although we are increasing our dose with tomosynthesis slightly, particularly after the age of 30, there really is a minimal effect on the breast. There are opportunities for dose reduction, and that is um, our goal with synthesized imaging. They look very similar to digital mammography images, but it eliminates the need for that um, dose, and it provides um, all the benefits of the 2D mammogram without the dose, and particularly in patients with implants or breasts larger than the detector, um, we um, really uh, do the patient um, uh, benefit by uh, minimizing the radiation. So how do we generate the synthesized image? We perform a standard scan, and we get our slices, um, and then a computer software program generates the mammogram, and it uh, synthesizes it into a MIP-like projection. This is just an example of a patient who has a 2D mammogram here on the left with the synthesized image here on the right and we show um, that it is the synthesized image. It should be designated on the image, and they are very similar in appearance. Here is an examination, um, CC views of a patient who has a traditional mammogram. Here are the MLO views in a moderately dense patient. The patient had a standard 2D image here on the left, but on the tomosynthesis slices, we see a focal area of architectural distortion that is not apparent on the 2D image. We compare the standard 2D mammogram to the synthesizer generated image, and um, we see also, too, that because the synthesized image has that uh, tomosynthesis information, we can appreciate the architectural distortion on the synthesized image compared to not being able to appreciate it on the standard exposure. So there are benefits of looking at the uh, synthesized image for the architectural distortion. And there are a couple papers that I'm going to review next that review the benefits um, of uh, synthetically reconstructed projection images. This first study um, was a prospective trial uh, published by Professor Scana in part of the Oslo screening program. And uh, there were two periods of this study. The first period was from uh, November 22, 2010 till December 21, 2011. 12,630 women were imaged, and this was the earlier version of the synthesized image. An upgrade um, was available in January of 2012, and so the second um, period uh, consisted of the upgraded version of the synthesized imaging. Uh, the uh, Two cohorts were the combination examination with the traditional mammogram versus the synthesized imaging with tomosynthesis. Um, I'm just going to review the second time period because that is equivalent to the currently available uh, synthesized imaging. And uh, we find uh, in this study that the synthesized imaging plus 
tomosynthesis showed a false positive rate almost identical to the combination examination with the standard 2D imaging, and the cancer detection rate was also very similar in this two time period um, uh, between the two cohorts. In the United States, uh, Dr. Zuli published a paper comparing the two-dimensional synthesized mammograms to the uh, mammography uh, alone. This was a retrospective observer-reader study, and she had a cohort consisting of biopsy-proven malignancies, benign lesions, and uh, benign or normal cases, and had a one-year follow-up. Um, the readers reviewed um, and uh, gave a separate rating for each breast on the original uh, traditional mammogram images and then a rating for each breast in the combination study. In the second aspect, they used the synthetic imaging um, compared to 2D images alone and then the combination study. So when we look at the ROC curves for the probability of malignancy comparing the uh, standard mammogram to the synthetic image, we see that the ROC curves were um, nearly identical. There was no statistically significant difference between the two. With the combination examination of the digital mammography and the tomosynthesis versus the synthetic imaging and tomosynthesis, they are nearly identical with not a statistically significant difference uh, between the two curves. So we showed in that study that uh, substituting the tr traditional mammogram with uh, the synthetic imaging was uh, nearly as good. Now I'm going to move on to a more detailed analysis of tomosynthesis after multiple rounds of screening with the modality. Uh, I think it was a very exciting study uh, published in JAMA Oncology in 2016, and I think this really demonstrates how we're going to see the performance of tomosynthesis moving forward in our practice. The original studies really focused on the uh, prevalent screening cases with tomosynthesis. Now what we're looking at uh, a little bit more in detail detail um, as to what happens after multiple rounds. So this was a retrospective analysis of the screening mammograms and looking at four consecutive years with DM being year one and then the years one, two, and three after tomosynthesis was implemented in this single site. Um, this was published um, uh, in 2016, as I mentioned, and contained cases from September 1, 2010 to September 30, 2014. There were over 44,000 screening events, which um, included 23,958 unique women. So a number of these women came back for uh, repeat examinations. So when you look at the population level, um, the recall rate prior to tomosynthesis implementation was 10.4%. Uh, and the cancer cases um, uh, improved slightly year after year after tomosynthesis was included. So after the uh, first year of tomosynthesis at a population level, the uh, cancer cases went up to 6.2% um, and improved slightly year after year. When looking at the patient level data, which I think is the most powerful aspect of this study, um, there was a significant decrease in recall rate um, after the patient was then exposed to tomosynthesis um, year after year. So if the patient um, uh, was imaged in the first year, um, there was uh, an average recall rate of 13%, but then after the second time the patient uh, was imaged with tomosynthesis, the recall rate dropped to 7.8% and down to 5.9% um, after the third year of tomosynthesis exposure. So this is very exciting and I think um, really will be reflective of how tomosynthesis will perform once it is fully integrated into the United States. I have uh, two more studies that I'm going to review. Uh, the second to last study is uh, how tomosynthesis compares to whole breast screening ultrasound in a trial that was um, published known as the ASTOUND trial. They uh, collected data from five centers in Italy from December 2012 to March 2015. Uh, the interim findings were published and looked at the comparison of incremental cancer detection in the same patients, uh, tomosynthesis versus whole breast 
um, ultrasound as a supplemental screening test. These patients um, were patients that were recruited that had dense breasts, and the physicians who performed the examinations um, did a handheld ultrasound evaluation. There were 3,231 screening mammograms, um, and they were asymptomatic women who were presenting for mammography that were greater uh, than or equal to 38 years old. Uh, they had dense breasts, um, which is important to remember, so by red C or D, and they did not have breast cancer, um, and they were excluded um, if they had a personal history of breast cancer, uh, were pregnant and lactating, or had implants. The same radiologist in reported the 2D mammogram and tomosynthesis images, and then an ultrasound was performed by another radiologist who was blinded to the tomosynthesis images but knew that the 2D mammogram was negative. This is just a schematic of the protocol for the uh, inclusion for the participants. Um, a, uh, patients who are participating in the standard 2D mammogram screening consented to participate in the study if they had a BIREDS 1 or 2 or A or B, um, meaning a fatty breast, then they were not eligible for the trial. If they had a breast density of uh, three or four, heterogeneously or extremely breast, um, dense breasts, then they um, were eligible. But if they had a 2D mammogram that was positive for malignancy, they were excluded. Uh, if the negative mammogram um, on the 2D examination um, was identified, then they were eligible for the study. Uh, there were 3,295 uh, patients, and they consented to participants uh, to participate. They, um, 64 patients declined the tomosynthesis, and they had both the tomosynthesis and ultrasound. Um, interestingly, probably benign lesions were not considered a recall. Um, however, there were 24 additional cancers that were detected on the supplemental screening. 12 were identified both on tomosynthesis and ultrasound. One was only identified on tomosynthesis, and 11 was only identified on ultrasound. <clears throat> this yields uh, an additional four cancers per thousand screens when patients were imaged with tomosynthesis, and an additional 7.1 um, cancers per thousand um, screens for patients who were imaged with ultrasound. There was no difference in false positive recalls, um, which was 1.7% for tomosynthesis versus 2.7, sorry, 2.0 for ultrasound. Um, however, it's important, again, to remember that probably benign findings were not considered a recall on ultrasound. So their conclusion was that supplemental ultrasound led to higher incremental breast cancer detection uh, compared to tomosynthesis, um, with ultrasound detecting almost all of those additional cancers. Then they uh, also concluded that there were the same false positives. But it's important to remember that the radiologists had access to prior ultrasound screens. So therefore, that allowed for a significant um, decrease in recall, whereas tomosynthesis cases were all first-time screens with tomosynthesis synthesis, so there were prevalent cases, and the probably benign cases were not worked up and counted as a recall. So the same false positives um, should be noted with um, this level of consideration. The last study that I will be reviewing um, was just recently published in 2017, which um, was a more detailed evaluation of the patient population originally presented in that JAMA paper of the 13 different sites, um, but looking at the age um, of those patients and the benefits of tomosynthesis based on 10-year age groups. Um, this, uh, the results were also adjusted for breast density. Uh, when you look at the patient population based on ages, um, we found that only 2.4% uh, of our patients were under age 40, which is consistent with the United States guidelines for um, annual screening beginning at age 40. There were um, approximately um, 12 to 15% of the patients that were screened after age 70. Um, and uh, the blue representing just digital mammography and the yellow representing digital mammography plus tomosynthesis, but the age groups were relatively consistent in both cohorts. This table uh, reviews um, the patient population. Again, there were 278,000 screening patients in the digital mammography arm and the 173,000 patients in the tomosynthesis arm. And you can see the number of patients in each decade of uh, the patients that were screened. Um, interestingly, you can see that the recall rate 
decreases as you get older for both the digital mammography cohort as well as the tomosynthesis cohort. Um, and um, that's important to recognize when you're looking at which age group sh should be screened and the risks associated with screening. Uh, this is a graphic representation of the results, and we showed that uh, women who were in their 40s had an increase in cancer detection rate, um, and um, while simultaneously decreasing their recall rate, and the improvement in cancer detection rate um, increases as you get older, whereas the change in recall um, remains about constant. I think what's important to note here too specifically is that when patients are screened with tomosynthesis, the cancer detection rate is identical to the cancer detection rate in those women who are in their 50s who are not screened with tomosynthesis. So the benefits of screening with tomosynthesis in women in their 40s um, is, is similar to what is considered acceptable um, in this day and age to uh, screen women in their 50s. This table then goes specifically through the results of the uh, uh, trial in the different age groups with women in their 40s in this column, women in their 50s, and so on, um, stratified by decade age groups. We can see that there were statistically significant improvements in the recall rate in all age groups, as well as um, the cancers detected. Um, except for the um, patients who were older than 70, there was no statistically significant improvement of a cancer detection after age 70. Um, the invasive cancers, um, however, um, was improved when we just looked at those alone for invasive cancer detection. Um, and this is just um, showing it in uh, a larger format. So um, the results of our trial showed that women in their uh, 40s, 50s, and 60s showed improvements um, for both cancer detection rate and decrease in recall when um, imaged with tomosynthesis. This was independent of breast density, and the performance grain gains were greatest for women in their 40s. Um, when we look specifically at the increase in invasive cancer detection women in their 40s, we see that there was a 1.6 uh, uh, increase in cancer detection rate um, for digital mammography alone versus a 2.7 um, per thousand cancer detection rate when tomosynthesis was added, which is a relative increase of almost 70 percent, where there was a decrease in recall in women in their 40s starting at 13.7 um, percent with digital mammography alone decreasing to 11.5 percent um, after tomosynthesis was added. So, um, and as I mentioned earlier, the increase in invasive cancer detection for women in their 50s with digital mammography alone was 2.4, so that we see that when we um, image patients with tomosynthesis, we're finding more cancers in their women in their 40s than women in their 50s with digital mammography alone. So in summary, um, of all of these studies, we're finding that um, when tomosynthesis is added to digital mammography, we find that there's an increase in cancer detection. Um, there are decreases in recall from screening, particularly after the second and third round of screening, which is what we will expect um, going forward after tomosynthesis is completely replaced digital mammography. Um, there is improvement in cancer detection in all tissue types except extremely dense breasts, but there was a small cohort of patients in our multicenter trial, and therefore we need to uh, dive deeper into this with larger patient populations. We also find decreases in recall in all tissue types except for fatty breasts, but again, because of the small cohort, um, we really need to find out whether that is consistent in larger patient populations. Um, synthesized images are nearly as good as a standard 2D uh, digital mammography and therefore can be used as a substitute uh, for traditional mammography if you're looking to decrease the dose. Um, tomosynthesis has demonstrated increase in cancer detection and you should be used as a prim primary screening modality with ultrasound as a supplemental um, uh, a modality, particularly in women with dense breasts, 
um, whether we do that for extremely dense breasts where tomosynthesis may not uh, perform as well um, uh, is a consideration. And that finally, performance of tomosynthesis in women in their 40s is similar to the performance of digital mammography alone in women in their 50s. And this should be um, considered when making guidelines um, for recommendations for the United States and screening women and, and the age to commence screening um, uh, uh, for their recommendations. Um, there are research questions that were put forth by the United States Preventive Services Task Force back in 2014. Um, there were key questions that they felt that needed to be reviewed, specifically as it relates to tomosynthesis as a primary screening modality for breast cancer. Um, they uh, felt that how does this uh, how does tomosynthesis perform? Um, performance differ by age and risk factor. We have demonstrated it based on age, but we do need to look at individual patient risk. So other opportunities um, for research include the types of cancers, so more than just the invasive and situ cancers, are we finding um, clinically significant invasive cancers. Um, we should do more comparisons with other screening modalities, such as automated or handheld whole breast screening ultrasound or MRI, um, maybe using tomo synthesis as the standard of care for mammography, but then uh, stratifying which uh, patients would benefit the most from supplemental whole breast screening, um, ultrasound, or MRI. Then looking at interval cancer information, um, the effect on different patient risk as the USPSTF um, questioned, and then finally the long-term mortality benefit with tomosynthesis as, um, as time passes, we'll have more information on survival outcomes. And that concludes my talk. Thank you very much.